Hey everyone, I'm Noah and this is Blackthorn Prod with another Unity and C Sharp tutorial. Today we will dive headfirst into the world of 2D platforming by making a simple yet effective and highly useful 2D platformer player controller. By the end of the video you will not only have a character that can move left and right but also double, triple, even quadruple jump if you like. What's more, the character will not get stuck to walls in this quirky way. With that said, let's begin. So I have a very simple Unity scene set up with this little black cube that will act as our player and a couple platforms. All these assets have no components for now except for a sprite renderer. So first things first, let's create a new c -sharp script, call it player controller and open it up. So obviously we'll want a public float speed variable that will dictate how fast our character moves around the environment. I'll also want a public float variable called jump force, which as the name implies will let us tweak how high our player can jump. Next up I'll create a private float variable named move input. We will use this variable to detect whether or not our player actually has the left or right keys pressed and move correspondingly. Lastly, I'll create a private variable of type rigidbody2d that I'll call rb and in our start function, I'll set rb equal to get component rigidbody2d. This way we can tweak and use our player's rigid body via script. Let's now get our character moving left and right. To do so, I'll create my void fixed update function, which I remind you is used to manage all physics related aspects of your game. Inside this function, I'll set my move input variable we created earlier equal to input.getAxis horizontal. Now note that this is a built in Unity input field which basically is the equivalent to holding down the left or right arrow keys. So to recap, if I press the right arrow key, move input will be equal to one. And if I press the left arrow key, move input will be equal to minus one. Also keep in mind that if you want your player to move in a more snappy and responsive way, instead of simply typing get axis, type get axis raw. Of course, this will not get our character moving. We must now set our rigid body's velocity, in other words, speed, equal to move input multiplied by speed on the X. And we don't want to influence the Y axis of our rigid body with this line of code. So we will simply type rb.velocity.y. Heading back into Unity, I will start by adding the player controller script to our player and type in some value for speed. Of course, I also need to add a 2D rigid body so our character can actually move and a 2D collider so he doesn't just fall through the platforms. And talking about platforms, those also need a box collider with default settings. All right, hitting play, you'll now see that our character can move left and right. Awesome. However, we would like our character to face the left when moving left and the right when moving right. So instead of swapping sprites for our character when moving left and right, which could of course get very time consuming, we will use the famous and very easy flipping technique. So I'll begin by making a private bool variable called facing right that I'll set to true at default. I'll then make a function called flip. I'll want this function to first of all set facing right equal to not facing right. In other words, if facing right is equal to false, then when this line of code runs, it will be equal to true. And you guessed it, if it's true, then it will be equal to false. I'll now make a vector3 variable called scalar that I'll set equal to the player's local scale. In other words, the player's x, y, and z scale values. I'll then take the x value of this scalar variable and multiply it with minus one. Lastly, I'll set my player's local scale 
equal to the scalar. So to recap, if my player has say an x scale of 4, then once this function runs, he would have an x scale of minus 4. Of course, we must now call this function somewhere in our script. So I'll make an if statement and check whether facing right is equal to false. If it is and move input is greater than 0, which means we are moving right, then we know our character isn't facing the right direction, and so we will simply flip him. If, however, facing right is equal to true and move input is smaller than 0, then we obviously need to flip our character because he is moving left while facing right, which doesn't make much sense. If we head back into Unity and press play, you will see that the character smoothly flips to face the direction in which he is moving. Awesome! Let's now get the jumping working. I'll start by making a bunch of variables. First of all, I'll create a private bool variable called is grounded that will detect whether or not our character is standing on the ground. To get our is grounded returning true or false, we will basically create a small circle via script near the player's feet. And if that circle collides with anything, then we know our player is standing on the ground. And if not, we know he is in midair. So I'll make a public transform variable called grounds check, a public floats variable called check radius, and a public layer mask called what is ground. All right, let's now put all these variables to good use. In my fixed update function, I'll set is grounded equal to physics.overlap circle and in the parentheses state a position for my circle. So I'll want my circle to generate by the player's feet, so at the ground check's position. I then must state a radius for the circle, so check radius. And lastly, I can put a layer mask in here, which I will do with what is ground. In Unity, I'll now create an empty game object called ground check give it a gizmo so we can clearly see it in the scene view, and place it next to the player's feet. Our circle will generate at this position, so select the player and drag and drop ground check inside of that empty slot. Also type in some value for check radius. I'll give my circle a radius of 0.5. As we're at it, we will state what is ground with this layer mask. I've already gone ahead and made a ground layer and set all my platforms to that ground layer. So for me, what is ground are all objects with the ground layer. All platforms or characters that don't have this ground layer will be ignored by our invisible circle. Note that this layer mask is optional, though I recommend you use it, since it can give you some nice control over what the player can jump off. All this is cool, but I'm afraid it won't get our character jumping. Now, as promised, I want to give my player the chance of double, even triple jumping. So I'll make a public int variable called extra jumps. In my update function, I'll create an if statement that will check if the player hits the up arrow key, which is the key I will use for jumping. This if statement will only return true if I have pressed the up arrow key and if extra jumps is greater than zero. If those two conditions are met, then we will set our rigid body's velocity equal to vector2.up multiplied by jump force. Now our player can jump. We must also decrease of one extra jumps, so our player doesn't have an unlimited amount of jumps. And of course, we also need to reset extra jumps when the player hits the ground. I'll check with an if statement if is grounded is equal to true. If that's the case, then I'll set extra jumps equal to say 2 because I only want my player double jumping. It would be better, however, to not hard code this value. So I'll change extra jumps into a private variable and make a new public variable called extra jump value. In my start function, I'll set extra jump equal to extra jump value and replace my 2 by extra jump value also. However, if the player has no extra jumps 
and presses the up arrow key, then we want our player to once again jump, but this time there's no need to decrease our extra jump variable. However, also make sure in the if statement that the player is grounded, or he will be able to continuously jump. If I zoom back into Unity, type in let's say 1 for extra jump, give my jump force a value of 100 and then hit play, you'll see that my character can not only jump but also double jump. If I then type in 2 for extra jump, my character can of course triple jump and so on. Now note that you'll probably have to tweak jump force and gravity scale for your character's jump to feel right. Alright, once that's done you'll notice that despite the cool jumping and movement, our player easily gets stuck to platforms like this. The easy fix to this is adding a 2D physics material to the player's rigid body. So I'll create a 2D physics material, call it player mat, and set friction to zero. I'll then drag and drop it inside the rigid body's empty material slot and press play. Now we have a working, playable 2D platformer controller. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video and will put this controller to good use by making your own 2D platformer. 2D platformers are a favourite genre of mine, so this video won't be the last on the topic, with for example a charged jump tutorial coming up in the near future. With that said, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the video. Also consider following me on Twitter where I post character designs on a regular basis. You can also join the Blackthorn Pro Discord server to connect with a small yet growing and passionate game dev community. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.